Hello folks. Okay, so today I want to give you kind of a quick overview on my single wheel balance board. One wheel. Unfortunately, this is kind of look a lot like a crappy cell phone video and there's a really good reason for that. It is. But aside from that, it's kind of what I got in the moment, so we're going to deal with it. So, I'm down here on the ground, and the first thing I'm going to do is kind of give you an overview. Um, this is running the 48-volt, 800-watt version of this motor. Um, thank you to the seller on AliExpress. I will definitely post up that information online. Um, the piece of plywood was a donation from a friend who just kind of had it sitting outside of the shop. Thank you. And the aluminum, I picked up a nice length of this for about 40 bucks. So it is like two, one inch by two inch. Not exactly. I'll post up the exact dimensions, but uh, it's nice, it's round, it's sturdy, and it's thick. It's kind of a big thing. Um, modifications to the aluminum, quite simple, is a 45 degree angle cut at 28 inches. And on the other side, uh, one big hole in the side to fit a socket. And a small kind of slotted hole for the motor to sit in and then for the axle to sit in. Make sure you do slot this hole. Um, you don't want that axle spinning on you. Uh, the bolts do crank in. The threads are pretty good. So that's that. It is a heavy setup, but she handles it just fine. I am running a 12S 2P Samsung 18650 25R battery pack so that's 24 samsung 18650 25 hours uh, for a maximum discharge of 40 amps right now i'm gonna give you this little bit of word of advice the bms i used here is awesome it has both charge and discharge don't use the discharge just connect a second set of battery leads directly to the power and run that to the board um if you are cruising on down the road at a decent speed and for some reason you do draw lower than what the BMS allows for, it isn't going to give you the nice little slow down warning that the VESC does. Um, it's going to drop you hard. So you don't want to do that. Um, all these parts I designed and 3D printed, including these end caps, I will put up the STLs for that um, so that you guys can make them. Very easy. This one just slips in. And you stick a bolt in the end. This one houses the switch for the sparkless switch and the power jack. So I do have another cover that's going to go up over the v, uh, the BMS from the battery pack and down. Now originally I was leaving this exposed because I was worried about heat on the discharge cycle. Um, not an issue. So I can cover that up. And I'm only charging it at 3 amps. So the 3 amp charger I have charges this thing from empty to full in about two hours to two and a half hours max. I am never going to charge this thing any faster than that. I have no need to. Um, I think I've, I rode this thing around for probably about an hour and a half today. Um, covered probably about 15 kilometers and I hadn't killed the battery. So if that takes me just a little over two hours to regain, not a big issue. This is the backing of the one switch. Like I said, this is gonna get covered. I wanted to show you all this before I put the covers on, just quite simply, once the covers are on, you wouldn't be able to see any of this. The, I have a four digit display, a oop, Arduino V3. So this is the Arduino Nano V3. Um, probably just barely runs the software I developed for this, but it does run it. MPU 6050, and just a little filter board communicates to the VESC over serial, so UART connection there, forward switch. All right, so let's power this thing up and I'll take you through the display. So, first thing I wanna cover is to arm this board, you have to step on the back switch and press the front switch, okay? Once you've done that, it's armed. And, oh, and the system has to be at minus 10 degrees. So, oh. There we go. Okay, so it has to be at minus 10, then you step on the back button, then you step on the front button, and away you go, right? 
Sorry about that. Okay, so let's take you into the settings menu. So to arm, step on the back, step in the front. If you are not armed, so you're not stepping on the back, you're gonna wanna hold down the front button for about five seconds. So. <laughs> Need some elevator music. All right, so once you release that, you'll be inside the settings menu. And the first one it'll take you to is settings one. There are eight settings. And each setting is preluded by the, well, the thousandth digit. So th um, I'll, ta I'll tell you about setting eight. Setting eight is factory reset. If you go to setting eight, hold down this button for five seconds, it will reset everything on the board back to zero. Since I've got this thing nicely tuned, that would suck. So I'm not gonna do that. We'll take you back around. Okay, so the first setting is the way setting. So essentially what you will be doing is you can have one way or two way. Pretty self-explanatory. One way allows you to go only in the front direction, forward direction. Once you have come to a complete stop and the wheel reaches a zero RPM, the board will relax onto the ground. Makes things very easy for dismounting. So you basically hop on, go. When you get to where you need to go, come to a stop, board will relax, fall to the ground. Second setting is your max power setting. I set mine at 95 just simply because the VESC has a max duty cycle of 95. Um, not sure why, but it's in there. I'm pretty sure that it has to do something with the limits of the VESC in this motor or they just hard coded that. But uh, once you've set the max limit, um, this is basically going to tell the board to start kicking. Um, so a kick is basically... Uh, preset value that you've set once you've hit basically the max value the board is going to kick up on you so it's going to kind of hard accelerate which will force the board to kind of go up which will force you to kind of break um, it's going to do that continuously basically telling you that if you don't slow down you're going to get hurt <laughs> so set that to your max value i've got it set to 95 so i'm pretty much maxed out the third setting is going to be your center zone okay so this is in degrees everything from seven degrees to minus seven degrees is basically just going to that's going to be your basically your kind of float mode um the oh this is really going to matter when it comes to the overdrive setting and i'll show you how that works next but so right now just remember i have this set for seven degrees as my center zone the next option is your multiplier. Okay, so this is your power multiplier. Basically, this board's throttle is determined in 100% forward to 100% negative or backward. So um, it will take the current tilt, so let's say 10 degrees, multiplied by, this is multiplied by 10. So unfortunately, this display, this display doesn't have any decimals. So this is actually 5.5. So just remember that. So it will take 10 times 5.5 and give you a forward throttle of 55%, right? So once you, if you're only at, let's say five degrees, well, it's only gonna give you uh, 27.5. I think that's right. I'm pretty sure that's right, right? So that is your throttle multiplier. Um, the next setting, this is your overdrive setting, setting five. Okay, so the way overdrive works is once you have reached over your preset center zone, so let's say you're at nine degrees, right? And that's a nice number. So you've set it for seven, you're at nine, so you are now two degrees over the zone. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna multiply, and this is another one of those multiply by 10. So this is actually a 0 0.5. So it's going to multiply the two degrees that you're over by by 0 0.5 so it's going to be one degree and is or one percent throttle and is going to add that one percent throttle every cycle that you're in that position so basically if you once you are at let's say eight degrees it's going to continue to accelerate until you let the board relax back to the seven degrees you've preset and the board's naturally going to want to do that right so if not, you're just gonna go faster and faster and faster until the board bucks you back and tells you, hey, you're going too fast. So that's the way the overdrive works. So now, because that basically offsets the new 
balance point of the board. So we, if you were to go back to zero without correcting that, you would still be going in a forward motion. So it works in the opposite as well. If you are at, let's say, five degrees, because we're set at seven, you are now five degree, or two degrees closer to zero. So what's going to do is it's going to then multiply the 0 0.5 by the minus two, and it's going to reduce the overdrive setting so that it relaxes, right? So that is how, instead of programming the board to basically jump to 100% at 10%, it's going to gradually get up there in speed, which is very controllable. And I've had this board up to about 22 kilometers an hour so far. And let me tell you, that is scary. It's still stable. The board keeps itself up. But when you're watching the ground go by you that quickly at like a 8 or 9% tilt, yeah, um, don't do that. <laughs> Be happy with your 15, 16 kilometer an hour maximum speed and keep it there. So, so yeah, that's what the, the overdrive value is. Next one is going to be the start speed. This is mostly if you're running, let's say, a DC motor. Um, this is, once you get past zero, it will start at this value and then add the multiplier value um, to basically get you going. So let's say you need to be at, let's say, 2 or 3% throttle to actually get this motor to move nicely. Then you would set that here, and then it would add that to whatever it got out of the angle times multiplier. The seventh is the kick. So what it's going to do is basically once you reach the max set power, it is going to kick 5% throttle at the board. And that will cause the board to kind of lunge forward on the wheel, which will pull the board back, right? So that's your kick. You can increase that if you want, decrease it. Um, but yeah, that's where you would set that. And of course we come back to the eighth, which is the factory reset. Once again, hold down that button for about five seconds. It'll clear out all your settings. Once you are done setting your settings, hold this for five seconds. Thankfully, I have a timer on this cell phone. And it will go back to the voltage display, which will basically tell you everything's been saved, right? If you don't save it before powering off the board, you're going to lose all the setting changes that you've made. Um, if you did mess up really badly while making those setting changes, just power off the board, right? And then I will somehow find a way to arm this while holding this. So, excuse me for a second. I'm going to hold down the rear button, tap the front button. Okay, so now it has gone to zero. There we go. Yeah, focus. And so the board is now armed, but it's not doing anything. You actually have to come up past center to kick the board in. Now, there's no weight on it, so it's kind of jumpy, right? Because it's basically tuned to have some weight on it. But yeah, you lean forward. It'll tell you your forward acceleration, your rear acceleration. And it'll take off. And as soon as you come off both buttons, drops back and shows you the two voltage settings, basically what the lowest voltage that was read during operation. This way you know if you've gone down to 41 volts during load, and then it will tell you what the current resting voltage is. All right, so that's basically everything. Um, sorry about the video quality, but uh, it's kind of what I got at this moment. I'll get my camera equipment back shortly. COVID-19 is kind of messing with those kind of things. But other than that, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll post up as much as I can so that people out there can kind of create one of these themselves. Feel free to download the software, use it. It works great. Um, I have been cruising all over town, picking up some serious speed. Uh, I got a friend who's going to race me with his board. Um, it's probably not going to go very well. I'm going to be wearing my full motorcycle gear, helmet, body armor, gloves, but we'll see. Um, all right, everybody ride safe, wear a helmet, have fun.